IMSA family, you're looking at a really unique part of what we do here in the paddock. It's amazing Corvette. What is it hanging off the front of it here and below? This is all part of the setup equipment. Some series might call it a flat patch. This is the setup pad and the setup equipment being used to do the alignment on this beautiful AWA Racing Corvette here in IMSA's GTD class. Going to learn a lot about setup pad technology here in IMSA. There's some really unique stuff going on, cutting edge with this equipment. But this is how the alignment's on the car, getting all the settings done properly. This is where it happens on the setup pad. We're going to talk to our friend, great championship winning race engineer, also the father of great IMSA champion, Colin Brown, Jeff Brown. Going to teach us a lot here. Tell us how this happens under the AWA race intent. Brown, you are a long-standing master of race engineering, chassis setup. In our old days working together, we would do this on a big aluminum structure, weighed a ton, took up a ton of space. But here in sports car racing, IMSA, we've seen real evolution, cutting edge with chassis setup. We see here this structure, we have a disc, a pad on the bottom here. Above it, we don't have a wheel and tire like we see in some other series. We see something dedicated, manufacturing, fabricated, and put on. What are we seeing here? And tell us how it's different from what Folks might have used back in the day. Well, w one of the things is we're looking for a consistency, as you know, Marshall. If you put a tire on there, there's tire pressures, there's the wear of the tire, there's all sorts of po potential inconsistencies. So what we're using is a solid billet piece of aluminum to represent the, the wheel or the tire. And we accurately measure from the center line of this to the bottom here to represent the exact distance of a standard Michelin tire. So this has all been machined by our team to, to mimic that tire size all, on all four corners. That way we get a much more consistent reading um, for all of our heights and everything. Then this pad is a pad that the tire will sit on. Right now the car is raised in the air, so we have this gap, but we'll set the car down on these two points. The load cells. The load cell is underneath it, and the bearings here ride here, so the whole car floats. So there's no binding, there's no, when you set a tire down, it, it, can, it can, as the camber takes over, it can bind up the tire and the wheel and give you false readings. So these are on uh, bearings, so everything floats. The, the weight is measured through the load cell that is in the pad. And we and don't it, see a bunch of wires and cables sticking out like we used to have to connect. Yes. We're communicating wires. By Bluetooth. Right, by, by Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So the, the loads are sent, um, the readings are sent from the load cell directly back to a central head unit yes. on all four corners. And so we call this the flat patch. We call this the setup pad. We're creating a truly flat and level platform for the car to sit on and be measured against. You can see here if we look down at the pads themselves, you see the added height here and having to use these screws to raise or lower to create all four of them beneath the four tires to be perfectly flat. Use surveying equipment, laser-based surveying equipment to make sure we've created this perfectly flat platform. Even though the paddock isn't flat, it's downhill. So you're having to actually angle this to create a, call it a false flat platform. Right. But when we get these cars onto the racetracks though, Jeff, racetracks never flat. There's always something so, why would we create a perfectly flat situation here knowing no racetrack is ever truly flat uh, for where the cars are transitioning from? It's a baseline, it's a reference. Exactly, it's again that consistency and repeatability again. We don't really care how bumpy the racetrack is or what the surface of the racetrack is. We wanna know that our setup, our corner weights are what we want, our cambers are what we want, our toes are what we want. And so we need that consistency again. We could set this up. Last week we're at Le Mans in France. We're using the same exact platform and reference as we are here at Watkins Glen five days later. And you could say during session here, all right team, I want you to lower the front ride height three millimeters. 
Yep. Great. You'll go out, you'll get feedback from the driver. They'll tell you how that performs. You'll then come back after the session. You do the set up before the session. You come back and do the set down. Do all the same measuring to make sure if you called for three millimeters, is it exactly, was it 2.9? That way you have this benchmark, this reference, so you know at Watkins Glen in free practice one on Friday, you did this to the car. The driver said it was great or bad. The lap time said it went faster or slower. It's this ongoing data capturing that you do all centered around what you learn by measuring off of this setup pad. Exactly, and we, we have to have that the same every weekend, or it's not, gonna be, um, it's not gonna be a good reference. The other thing is, these cars take a beating. They go through a lot of things. Things can move, things can bend, things can change. So we can come back and check it on the pad, is what we'll call it. We'll put it on the pad and check it to make sure that we haven't, something hasn't moved, something hasn't changed. And unless we have an absolutely perfect reference, we don't know whether the reference has changed. We can't just set it on the ground because it's got to be in exactly the same spot each time. So getting that perfect reference is, is really important. And it's, it's just consistency again. Um, there's lots of ways of doing it. Like you said, some of the IndyCar teams still use the old, the old um, flat pads that were big uh, setup pads that were, had ramps and everything and you push the car up to it. For us, this is more convenient and more importantly, more repeatable and more consistent. Jeff, we know for you as a race engineer, the setup pad is vital for finding performance, validating performance. It's also something where from a compliance standpoint, these play a vital role. You send this car, every team send their cars to IMSA's technical inspection where they go up on their set of pads. But before you get there, whether it's minimum weight, any of the other parameters they say you have to meet, this is used as well to make sure you are in compliance. Exactly. So we have to meet a minimum weight. We have to meet uh, maximum cambers and things like that. So all of this information that we get, the weights that we get from there, do not always match IMSAs. So we know, again, because we're so consistent with this, that we know we almost always have a certain offset to IMSA. So they go by their scales. They don't care what ours That's read. That's what matters. But if theirs says you're three pounds under and yours says you're three pounds over, you know you need to adjust on your end to match theirs. Exactly. So Charlie Ping, our race engineer, knows that offset. And he will build in to the ballast that we run any offsets that we always see. The same thing with cambers. We, our cambers read slightly different than IMSA's based on our scales and our measurements. It's not to say IMSA's right or wrong, but they're the final decision. So if we don't pass their numbers, we're disqualified. So again, we're always making sure that, you know, sometimes we, in weight, obviously, we want to push the limits as much as we can. So in camber, sometimes we want to be right at that limit. And so it's, again, the, that consistency. If our scales weren't consistent, we wouldn't know what IMSA is going to read. And you're looking at the tablet here. Granted, there's no values on it now because the car is sitting above the, uh, the pads. But nonetheless, this is what you're looking at. And this is where, again, with the car on there, you're looking at getting a lot of this information along with what you're measuring manually. So that's the information that's sent back by Bluetooth from each one of those scale pads, comes back here, and when the car is on the pad and the weights are there, the mechanics can adjust the corner weights to balance the car properly, and they can see it immediately here. So, that, so our crew chief, Andrew Stiddle, will stand here and tell the other mechanics up one turn on the right front and then he can watch that weight change in real time and then down here or up there and they can balance this thing very quickly. Speed is another reason for this is we have short time between sessions. We need to do a set down right after the session so that Charlie the race engineer can get that information and see where the car ended up and quickly transfer any setup changes he wants back to the guys and they can make them real quick so we can get out for the next session. So Jeff, we've got the load cells below. You drop the car down, the weight comes on. You're adjusting ride height. You might be looking at any cross weight. See if there's cross weight. Make sure you can dial that out, hopefully. But you're getting all of your measurements here, making all of your adjustments, settling the car, measuring them again to make sure you get everything you want. And in all this high-tech stuff, super transportable, small and compact, 
take it from Lamont to Watkins Glen to Laguna Seca, you still pay a visit to uh, the good old Bass Pro there. Any, anytime you can go to a place where you buy hunting and fishing gear and you can use that on a zillion dollar Corvette uh, IMSA GT car, tell us about something as simple like this for measuring tow. Well, it's, um, yeah, it's, it doesn't quite fit the modern high tech thing. A lot of teams are using lasers to, to measure their tow. I might have oversold the modern part there, I apologize. Yeah, but it's still, it's still pretty cool. So it's, it's still an individualized thing, right? Our, our crew chief, um, Andrew Stittle, likes to use his tape measure and his uh, scale. And so they'll come up to this line here. Right. Eventually, right now, they're setting this up, but this fishing line will be lowered to this line here, which is the center line of the tire. And then he will measure with a scale from there to the fishing the line. Distance the distance to the fishing front line. front and rear, and that will tell him how much it's towed in or towed out. You could send a laser beam down there. Yeah, it's cool, but Andrew loves his, his, his fishing line and his tape measure and Charlie Ping, our race engineer, is cool with that. And again, it's repeatable. The, you can see the, there's grooves right in here, and this bar is centered exactly on the car. The front one is centered exactly on the car, and the tow measurements are absolutely repeatable every time. And when you're done, you get to pretend like you're doing a little bit of fishing, reel it in, reel in. and you're finished there. These, these are actually our backup ones. We got a message uh, about three, Two days ago, we left our primary fishing reels in France. <laughs> and, but as any good team, we have a backup set yes. and we've deployed our backup fishing reels. Just like your spare body work. Yep. Well, let's close on this. So again, for fans who are just getting to learn more about the sport, the behind the scenes stuff that's so important for you, a driver tells you, Jeff, I'm feeling something in the back of the car, whatever it might be. I don't like the way it's handling in this particular way. You look at data, there's a million sensors you can sort through there, but ultimately, this is the place you trust most. You're gonna to wanna to come back here after the session, do all the measurements on the set down, and see, is there, it's your own little CSI Watkins Glen. Ooh, this measurement's off a little, something might be a little bit amiss. This is so vital, and yet, for those watching this six-hour sailings race on Sunday, they're not gonna see this, this won't be part of the show, but this sets up your ability to succeed and every other team's ability to succeed as well. Absolutely, and it's, it's one of those things you may hear drivers comment uh, after a practice something, I don't know, it felt kind of weird, so it just didn't seem right, we'll put it on the pad and check it. That's what we're doing. The first thing you do if something doesn't seem right, put it on the pad, this equipment we've just described, make sure that there isn't something out of alignment or the cross weight has changed for some reason or something. And if it hasn't, then we've, as you said, CSI'd it to the point where, okay, it's not the car, it's not a setup change that something bent or something moved. It's either, now we're on to look at the data, look at the track conditions, look at tire wear, look at things like that. But we have to know absolutely whether the car is changed or the setup has changed, and this equipment lets us know that. Watch us this season on NBC and Peacock. Be sure to subscribe to IMSA on YouTube and enjoy our brand new IMSA Endurance Hour podcast. And if you're interested in digital activation in motorsports, visit IMSA.com partnership.